All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the seventh day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. And I'm looking at the uh, the Facebook page, our YouTube page over there, and it says, Ukraine sinks three ships and kills the Russian commander. On a story. Let's see what the date on that is. Uh, one day ago. That's a bunch of BS. Everything coming out of Ukraine is just lies. Just like Washington. Everything that comes out of Washington is lies. Most of what's on mainstream media is lies or a story, a, a narrative that's spun around a fact. But the narrative is not true. You notice that lately? This, this whole civilization is collapsing. It's the last days. The Bible tells us about these times. It's, I've, I can't recall a time in human history that's quite like this. Well, there's been a few, but this is global. Especially in the in what's called uh, the West today, uh, yeah, uh, the the ruled by Washington uh, and actually Satan because that's where his throne is apparently right now in the White House in Washington. Uh, he's got his little puppet there because the puppet can't do anything on his own. <laughs> he's got to have somebody to tell him what to do. Yeah, uh, the devil's not liking me today anyway. I, I did just did a video here and and it didn't work. Something simply didn't work right. The electronics didn't work right. Came out with no sound. It was working a minute ago, but then it stopped working. Oh, well, he doesn't like me. The feelings are mutual. Okay, I noticed today, why I'm out here, is uh, YouTube, I noticed that this funny little icon next to their play button on the uh, YouTube uh, page uh, on the web. And I thought, what is that? Finally, I clicked on it to see what it was. And guess what they're promoting, Satan? <laughs> see, they do nothing to promote Jesus Christ and the God of the Bible. Everything else, but not God. Not the God that is. They'll promote other gods, but not the God who is. The God who created everything. And in fact, once you realize that there was a creator, then the next question has to be, has he spoken? And yes, indeed, he has. Especially, he's spoken in the scriptures and the prophets and the apostles, but especially in his son, Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh. He demonstrated who he was by raising from the dead, raising himself from the dead. He had the authority to do that. He laid down his life. No one could take it from him. He laid it down, and he rose from the dead. He died for the sinners of this world, for the sins of this world, that God might reconcile us to him and yet be just. God can't simply overlook his own laws. So he had to satisfy the justice of his laws, his word. And yet, because of his love and grace to save sinners, that he could justify sinners, declare them to be right with him, and yet be right with himself. That's what Jesus Christ and the cross was all about. God making it possible for us to be saved. But YouTube would have enough of that. They have no uh, banners celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ or the birth of Jesus Christ or the death of Jesus Christ. But what do they have? Well, today they finally laid their cards on the table. Literally. Yes, uh, so the banner, YouTube feature of the day. Oh, I hate these things. 
always trying to shape your consciousness. I will not be shaped by you, YouTube. I will reshape you. God will reshape you. He is coming, and you will not survive his coming. There will be no place in the kingdom of God for YouTube. Or the governments of this world. Or the oligarchs of this world. Or the liars of this world or the murderers and thieves and idolaters of this world. God has another place for you. It's the eternal landfill. That's what Jesus called it. He, he called it, uh, let's see, what was the word he used? I uh, uh, can't remember quite what it was now. Anyway, it was the, uh, the garbage dump to the east, no, to the west of the city of Jerusalem where they threw all the trash. And Jesus said, well, that's what judgment will be. God will remove everything from his kingdom that causes offense, offends God, and offends his people, and throw it in the great landfill, scrapyard of eternity. Nothing else you can do with that stuff. You gotta get rid of it because it's evil. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so YouTube has come out with this feature. What's in the cards for you? It's in, my feature isn't in the cards. It's in the hands of God. I know what my feature is. I belong to Jesus Christ. I'm a son of God. I have eternal life. This body's going to die. Tells me that every day. But I'm not going to die. Because Christ lives, I live also. But according to YouTube, it's in the cards, the tarot cards. Divination. Another invention of the devil. In celebration of word, World Tarot Day, not in the celebration of the resurrection of Christ, not in the celebration of the birth of Christ, or his death for the sinners of this world, but in celebration of Tarot Day, World Tarot Day, World Witchcraft Day, Divination Day. God hates it. Get a tarot reading in this interactive experience with your favorite YouTube creators. Well, they're not my favorite ones. <sighs> this world has just gone stark raving mad. Now, see, this stuff corrupts a society. Tarot cards corrupt a society. Idolatry. Uh, it, basically, it's a way to turn you away from God. The God who reveals himself through creation. Everybody knows that God exists. He's made that clear, he said himself, to the things he's made. It doesn't tell you everything about his character. No, he sent his prophets and his apostles and his own son for that. To demonstrate what he's like personally. But creation demonstrates his existence and his power. You can't, you can't get away from it. But we try today. Yeah, Bill Gates and his metaverse. Yeah, yeah he's trying. Oh, that's Bill. That's, not, that's Facebook. Facebook. Doesn't matter. They all have the same stuff going on. Virtual reality. Yeah, the Matrix. The Matrix. We're already in our Matrix. Yeah. <sighs> the, the, all the lies out there are the Matrix. Truth is found in God's Word. Eternal truth. And you have it available. You just don't bother to read it. I think one of the problems with many Christians, many people that call themselves Christians in this society and others, is regardless of what they call themselves, they act like functional atheists because they do not see the world through the eyes of God, through the eyes of God's Word. They don't ask the question, what has God said about this? No, instead they just listen to the world, listen to the news, listen to the talking heads, Listen to the, uh, the experts appointed by those who deceive us. You know, we, we, it's... 
I think the, uh, the governments of this world are little more than mafiosos today, especially in the United States. Where else can you have somebody as crooked as the President of the United States publicly boasting about his corruption when he was vice president? How he used his, the power of his office and influence to get a, a Ukrainian prosecutor that was nosing about the business that his son was raking in loot from. Yeah, he used his power, Biden used his power to get that man fired. And where is the congressional investigation into that corruption? There isn't any, which proves that the Congress is just as corrupt. Those in power in Congress are, are all in the same racket. They manage, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And politics does not work without money, especially in the United States. Well, I happen to notice something else. Let me get this ugly thing out of my face here. Oh. YouTube, all you people out there in Silicon Valley that promote this stuff, your day is coming. Or should I say your night is coming. Society is collapsing, and you're part of the problem. Collapsing all over this world because of sin. It's coming, the, the tares, the weeds, that produce their seed heads. And it's not wheat. Judgment's coming, and the tares are going to be burned. The wheat and the chaff are going to be sep separated. The chaff will be burned. That's the worthless stuff. The tares are going to be discarded, burned. God's going to cleanse this world and install his government, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You better repent. Make peace with God before he comes, because then it will be too late. So, I noticed another thing oh, earlier, I guess it was last week now, uh, way of Life Literature, uh, I usually check them every week. Uh, they, he's been, uh, uh, David Cloud has been doing uh, internet uh, stuff, a blog, I guess you could say it, except they weren't called blogs then. Before there was an internet, back when it was still, I think it was before it really and existed, back when we used dial-up bulletin boards. Huh, sort of... Uh, Yeah, I've been around that long. I've been around longer than that. Yeah, I predate the idea of personal computers. I had one of the early ones. Before IBM produced them, I had one. Uh, back in the uh, the Intel 8080 days, if you know what that is. Probably don't, though, do you? <laughs> anyway, here he does a story here. Uh, this this week, uh, it's uh, June 2nd. Mark Levin's way or God's way? And I think this is a, a really good story. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Go over to uh, to uh, wayoflife.org. Just way, W-A-Y-O-F-L-I-F-E uh, dot -E org and read it for yourself. Uh, but he's he's not a, he's just using uh, Mark Levin as an example. He's actually, uh, as he mentions here, conservative Christians, real Christians, Bible believing, born again Christians. Those are the only kind of Christians there are. Everybody else is not a Christian. You might call yourself a Christian, but you're not a Christian because you call yourself a Christian. You have to belong to Jesus Christ. His Spirit has to dwell in you. Otherwise, you're not a Christian. You can get baptized. You can belong. You can join a church. That doesn't make you a Christian. You got to be born again. Read John, the Gospel of John, chapter three. You must be born again, born of the Spirit. God must save you. He must regenerate you. He must transform your life inside. Give you a new spirit and a new heart. And a new covenant. You must become his, a 
child of God. Otherwise, you're not a Christian, regardless of what you call yourself or other people call you. Uh, anyway, there's, uh, yes, I would say I have a lot of things in common with conservatives, except I think they're not really conservatives. They, they don't see the problem. And I've noticed that a lot lately because things have gotten so crazy. I listen to a lot of people. I agree with what they're saying, but they don't go deep enough. They're shallow. They talk in terms of economics and uh, money supply and oil and uh, politics and war. Okay, that's just a surface noise. What's going on underneath? What causes these things? Like the, the shooting down in Texas. What caused that? A gun didn't cause it. Guns don't cause things. They're not agents. They're tools. They're not agents. A person has to cause it. Why do these things happen? When I was young, they didn't happen. They didn't. Oh, there were murders here and there, but nothing like these things. Civilization itself is collapsing. Not just the United States. All around the world. Europe, America especially. What's called uh, the, the first world. It's often, or used to be called the first world. The West. It used to be called Christendom, but no relation to Christ anymore. But he... Uh, David Cloud at uh, Way of Life Literature wanted to make a point, and he just picked Mark Levin, who he, um, has many things in common as far as conservative uh, views in common with him. But he wants to point out some differences. Differences between Mark Levin and David Cloud as far as the important issues, not just the things we agree on or they agree on, but the real things that make a difference between Mark Levin and David Cloud. David Cloud is a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I don't agree with him on everything, but a, he's a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. That makes him, him my brother. I don't agree with that. So because somebody's my brother or sister, that doesn't mean I have to agree with him on everything. The question is, does Christ dwell in them? That's what gives Christians fellowship, koinonia is we have the same person dwelling in all of us. But he doesn't dwell in others. If you're not born again, he's not in you. You don't belong to God. Just want to make that clear. I have to say it over and over again. Maybe it'll get through to somebody. So, uh, is, again, David Cloud is very sympathetic to the views in many ways, the political views and others about with conservatives. And Mark Levin is a... Uh, an example he's using here, not out of uh, uh, hostility toward him, but on the contrary. So what does Mark? Uh, what does David Cloud have differences? Where does he have differences with Mark Levin? So he says, first of all, we have a different God. I'll, I'm, I think I am going to read part of this. Um, again, this is from David Cloud at WayOfLife.org. We have a different God. My God is sovereign, is the sovereign of the universe. Amen to that. He has an eternal plan that encompasses all of human history, and that plan is that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Amen. You just read in the Bible there, Ephesians 1.10. To this end, God worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, Ephesians 1.11. He changes the times and seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Daniel 2, 21. Actually, that wasn't Dick. I don't believe that was a prophet that said that there, though. Uh, Got to be careful with the Bible. Make sure you know who's talking. I think that was Nebuchadnezzar that might have said that. Um, without looking. Uh, but yeah, so there's, there's some things in the Bible that God is not saying. Sometimes the devil is speaking, for example, in Job and Job's friends. You know, so you got all these characters in Job and people quote Job. They don't care, like as if God said everything in Job. No, he didn't. No, just because somebody says something that's recorded in the Bible doesn't mean that person's talking for God. So be careful about that. Uh, uh, this... Not that God doesn't remove 
and set up kings. That's that's part of his power. God, God, God can do what he wants. He is the sovereign. See, human beings, we don't have rights. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The idea of human rights is a lie. Why? Because God exists and he is the creator. We have responsibilities to God. What do human rights mean without God? Nothing means anything without a God that stands behind it all. If atheists have the idea of atheists talking about rights is absurd. Based on what? What rights? Where do they come from? Nowhere. But people do have responsibilities to God, and God is a judge. And if somebody doesn't carry out the responsibilities toward you, like not stealing you and not from you and not murdering you and not having a, committing adultery with your wife, then they are violating God's laws and their responsibilities to God. It has nothing to do with rights. The rights belong to God, and everyone has responsibilities to God. But what do people want to do in the United States? This is, this is mainly where this junk comes from. Not that it started here. It came, came from people like John Locke and the other philosophers of the Enlightenment, as if that was light. And it was returned to darkness. No, you cannot have rights. God has rights. You're not you're not king. You're not a sovereign. You're not God. Only God has the right to say what is right and wrong. Only God has the right to judge those things, truly. And in fact, the rulers of the world are supposed to be his servants, his ministers, administrating his justice in an imperfect way. But that's not happening today. Not in the United States. No, it's like that, that kid that uh, shot those people rather than a quick trial and a public hanging. Because I don't think there's, there's any question who did it. Plenty of witnesses. You got two or three eyewitnesses. That's all you need. See, that's God's justice. And it's a public example. So people know, don't do this because this is what will happen. Not in this country. The, the, uh, it, no, it's the gun that did it. The gun grabbed him and caused him to shoot people. Yeah. Blame everything but sinful humanity and sinful culture and sin the, the, the love of money that causes so much in this country, including selling harmful things to young people. Just everybody's in it for themselves. Wicked. This country's evil. Not just this country, though. Disgusting. Oh, God, come and deliver us. We don't need... I don't care about climate change. We need a change in the spiritual atmosphere. A permanent change. Not just revival. We need resurrection. He... Uh, this God created all things, and in him we live and move and have our being. And by him all things consist. Yes. For him and through him and to him are all things. That's talking about Jesus Christ there personally. The him there is Jesus Christ. And to him be glory forever. Romans 11, 36. No, knowing this God, I do not have to wring my hands at human affairs. They are safely in his hands. Well, yeah, the final say, but... Uh, God does not cause the evil like that person that shot those, those children down there in Texas. Now, unless you're a Calvinist, then God does cause the evil. And if you don't, if you're a Calvinist and you don't believe that that's what Calvinism believes, you just haven't looked at it carefully enough. You have to get into that eternal decree of all things, and that's, that's the end of Calvinism right there. No, just because it might make you feel good doesn't mean it's true. The question is on, on systems of theology and philosophy. Does it agree with the Bible? Not just here or there, but is it consistent with the Bible? Is it comfortable with what the Bible says? And no, I rejected Calvinism just like I rejected Lutheranism and Catholicism and a bunch of other things because it's not consistent. I don't hold to a man-made system. 
I will not, because they're, none of them are consistent with the Bible. Some are closer than others. They're not all equally bad, but they're the opinions of men. They're not God's Word. Believe what God has said. But unless you're born again, you won't be able to understand what God has said. Because you're at, enter, uh, at enmity with Him, hostility toward God. You're self-centered. God's got to fix that. We weren't created that way. We and Adam were not individually cre created. Uh, we have a different gospel, uh, David writes here. Yeah, absolutely. My gospel is the gospel of eternal salvation through God's grace, through the vicarious atonement of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is God's free gift without works and sacrament. Yes. Amen. That's the gospel. That's the real gospel. Now, there's a lot of so-called churches and denominations that, that put the church, as they define it as, uh, themselves, in between you and God. No, there's only one mediator between man and God, and that is Jesus Christ himself. Anybody else puts himself in there and say, you got to get, get to God through them? Uh, no, that's a false gospel. Uh, the, the, you have to go through their sacraments, their church, outside their church, there is no salvation? Well, they're the church of Antichrist. They, they have substituted themselves and their institution for Jesus Christ. No, you must have a personal relationship with God. You must be personally reconciled to God himself through faith in Jesus Christ. It is God's free gift without works and sacrament. Yes, you're not saved by works and you're not saved by sacraments. By the so-called means of grace. No, Jesus is the means of grace. You trust in what he is and what he's done for us. It is a gospel for individuals. Yes, it saves souls, not nations. Yes, it is spiritual, not political. Yes, except the part when Jesus returns, then it becomes very political because he is the king. There just aren't any elections in his kingdom. There's not going to be a vote whether or not Jesus is going to be king or not. He already is. He's always been. We have a different authority. Christians from uh, Mark Levin. Levin. Levin? Levin. 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 Okay, I think that's right. My authority is the Holy Bible. See? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just like David Cloud. Which I hold to be the verbal, plenarily inspired word of God. Fully. In other words, all the Bible's inspired by God. But as I pointed out, that doesn't mean that everything that's in the Bible is God speaking. Some of it's context. God believes in context. A lot, of, especially the Old Testament, it's um, and the New. A lot of it's uh, God's words are put into a context that gives them meaning. They're not like the Quran, a disembodied revelation, which isn't from God. I've read it. It's not from God. No. Pretty childish. <sighs> so it's the, ver the, the inspire, the Bible is fully inspired. And, and soul, the soul, the only authority for faith and practice. See, David Cloud is a born-again Bible-believing Christian, a fundamentalist Baptist. Uh, in his particular case. But he and I agree completely on this. The Bible is the authority, not tradition. Tradition is not authority. The Bible, the Word of God, is the authority. That's the word he's given us. I don't need some man's opinion when God has delivered his word in the Scripture. And all kinds of people, oh, it was all changed and made up and everything else. Really? There's fragments of this Bible that go that exist that go all the way back to the end of the first century. Not many many fragments, but we have we have entire Bibles from the fourth century. We know it was there. There's thousands and thousands of manuscripts. We know. And, and the the what the Bibles say today is essentially the same thing as they said in the beginning. 
the the only only in a few places are a few slight changes and a few copies. Everything else is spelling variations and things like that that are meaningless. Meaningless. Yes, the Word of God is the sole authority for faith and practice. Which means we examine everything, including what leaders' words say, both pastors and uh, presidents. We check them by the Word of God. And the Word of God says God has a place in hell for all liars. That should tell you a lot about a lot of politicians. They don't belong to God. Everybody that that uh, loveth and practices lying. People that not only lie, but they love to lie. They just do it without even thinking. You think of anybody like that? I can think of all kinds of people like that. You see them on the mainstream media all the time, in, the, in Washington, state governments. They are, Satan, Jesus said, was a liar from the beginning, and his children are like him. No, yeah, they do his same deeds. So that's how you can know somebody's of the devil. That are they like they are a liar? They love to lie. They practice lying. Feel no uh, remorse at lying. No guilt about it. Aren't concerned about it. They will be. They will be. But then it will be too late. Make peace with God before the court takes its seat. When the judge takes his seat, it's too late. That is, uh, that is what it claims to be and that it has been shown to be by many infallible proofs. Yes. I never find anything uh, that actually contradicts the Bible as far as reality. The Bible is inconsistent is consistent with reality. The Bible reveals mankind as he is, sinful and lost. The Bible, if you, if you know what the Bible says about the world and humanity, then you understand why Jesus had to come to save sinners. You also have to look at the world and see why these terrible things go on, whether it's wars and famines and all these things, most of which are man-made, probably including certain pandemics being man-made. <clears throat> but it's humanity and humanity's sin. That's the problem. Humanity's greed. Humanity's evil. Humanity's the fu I think the fundamental uh, essence of sin is self-centeredness. Rather than than God being the focus of our life, we make ourselves the focus of the life, or we're born that way, because we're born dead in trespasses and sins. In other words, that we we don't come into this world with God in us. Because of what Adam did, we're born into his fall, and we continue down that path unless that's interrupted by God. And sometimes interrupted is the right way to say it, too. Yes, I was going to hell until God interrupted my journey. That's true. I was. Definitely so. <sighs> we have a different citizenship than Mark Levin. My citizenship is in heaven. I'm a pilgrim, a stranger, an alien in this present world. For our conversation is our conversation here is our our life, our our walk, our oh, I can't think of a better word than that, is in heaven. It doesn't mean our speech. Conversation in the King James has to do with our our daily life. From whence we also look for the Savior, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a different perspective. My perspective of life is viewed from God's eyes, not man's. Amen. That's what I endeavor to do. That's what thinking biblically is supposed to be about, unless I wander away from that. Looking at what's going on and judging it according to the word of God. 
what does God say about this? Now, what do I think about it? What does God say? What does God say about lying? That makes me very uncomfortable to see all these lies constantly. I can't stand it anymore. I just can't. I leave the room. I will not watch the news. That's one thing about the Internet. You can choose what you see and what you hear. Choose wisely. And then you also can listen carefully and you can back it up. Did he really say that? Or when YouTube tells you to go get a tarot reading and you think, well, what does God's Word say about that? Well, it talks about divination in God's Word, about fortune-telling in God's Word. Always condemns it. It's wicked. Christians do not practice such things. And if they should, in weakness or curiosity, involve themselves in it, they'll repent because they will be convicted of their sin by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is holy. We have a different perspective. My perspective of, uh, perspective of life is viewed from God's eyes, not man's. This perspective is revealed in God's Word where I am told, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affections on the things above, not on the things on earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Not physically dead yet, but you're dead to this world. You've been saved out of this world. You, you, were, you died with Christ on the cross uh, spiritually, so to speak. It's a complicated way to, 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 I don't want to get into trying to explain that right now, but you're dead toward the world because you've been risen to a new life. In Judaism today, as in Jesus' day, when a Gentile, a non-Jew, they could become Jews. Converted, they... Uh, uh, if they were men or male, they were circumcised. If they were female, they weren't, of course. But uh, uh, both male and female were baptized, uh, immersed. And it was to the Jewish culture. This is in the Old Testament, so it's we have to look to, to other sources a little bit there. It was they were. It represented their dying to their old life and to their old people and to their own old family and rising again to a new life with God's people and to God, leaving behind the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of paganism, the unbelievers, and dying to that and rising again to a new life with Christ, with God and his people, his covenant people. <clears throat> For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God, who in Christ, he who is our life, shall appear. We uh, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. When Christ returns, we will be caught up, if we're still alive on earth, to meet him in the air. He will, the, the dead in Christ will be risen, uh, and then uh, their bodily resurrection, and then we who are alive, still in the body, will be changed in an instant. Uh, without dying. Christ died for us. The wages of sin is death, but Christ died for us. So, so technically, born-again Christians, we don't have to die to satisfy the Word of God. Jesus Christ already did, that the wages of sin is death. He died for us. But if you are not don't belong to Him, that doesn't apply to you. <laughs> You have to be reconciled to God through faith, otherwise Jesus' resurrection is going to, isn't going to help you there. We see different fundamentals at work. I see spiritual fundamentals as a root of America's evils. Amen to that. That's true. A primary fundamental is the condition of churches, which in turn dramatically affect the character of the people. I, I don't exist unless I want to go there. Um... The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Well, the, the, the 
the church rep the, is the place where truth dwells on earth. The church, though, is God's people. It's not a building. It's not an organization. It's, it's not a, a system with a pastor and that. No, it's God's people. Those other things are just conveniences. They're not necessary. Everyone who belongs to Christ is part of his church. There's only one church. Now, that's one of the areas that I disagree a bit with David on. But, uh, and America has always been a nation of churches. Well, <clears throat> not quite. No, see this. But the, the, uh, the, it is, the spiritual fundamentals is there. But you also have to realize, and most Americans are unwilling to accept the truth, that America's revolution was a revolution against God. Fundamentally, a revolution against God. No born-again Bible-believing Christian could have been in favor of taking up arms against the king. This is a violation of Romans chapter 12. Just out, out, out and out violation. As if King George was some brutal tyrant. That was nonsense. That's just a propaganda propaganda so you replaced a christian country england and a christian king christian you know george king george was uh had a reputation of being quite devout as far as his religion but uh with a godless system america's godless always has been godless if you don't believe that just go read go back and read the the uh um the writings of the founders. Go back and and read the, uh, oh, what do they call it again? I mentioned it earlier. The uh, Federalist letters. The, the, those were uh, newspaper editorials, and the anti-Federalist Federalist papers, and anti-Federalist papers. You look at it on on the internet. You find it on PDF. Just do a, do use your computer to search. Search for words like God. I'll search for words like Jesus, Christ, Christianity. You'll find them. So in involved in the whole idea of starting a new nation, breaking away from uh, uh, your old nation, it, no mention of God. What does that tell you about the people that did it? They were godless. They didn't believe in the God of the Bible. They were deists, masons. The God of masonry doesn't really care. Masonry is hocus pocus. Masonry itself is an abomination to God. There's a whole lot of Christians in the Southern Baptists that are Masons. See, they don't examine things by the Word of God. They rather do what they want to please themselves and their buddies than do what pleases God. And yet they call themselves Christians. Does Jesus Christ call them Christians? That's the real question. <sighs> we have a different goal. My goal in life is to please uh, the God who saved me by its amazing grace and to fulfill his calling, which is to be an ambassador of Christ. Now, David Cloud was a missionary for a number of years in Tibet, I believe. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. We fight different battles with different weapons. Yes. See, Mark Lev uh, Levin has a lot of things that Christians don't have in common with him. Important things. The important things we don't have in common. Just says superficial stuff. And some of that is, eh. My battles are spiritual and are fought with spiritual weapons. This is called the sword of the spirit in the Bible. The shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the, the breastplate of righteousness girded with the truth, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Uh, using the armor of a Roman legionary as examples. Paul. 
the sword of the Spirit. That's the, the Bible. The Word of God is called the sword of the Spirit. These are spiritual weapons, not real swords, not real shields, not certainly not AR-15s. AR-15 is not a spiritual weapon. It can't accomplish spiritual good. For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. All you people out there running out to get tattoos just because it's popular. What does God think about that? Does he want you to put graffiti all over his possession? No, you don't consider your body God's possession because you don't believe what's in the Bible, and yet you call yourself a Christian. You don't think biblically. What's going to be your excuse when God asks you about that? Why didn't you do what I said? I uh, didn't care what you said. That would probably be a true answer. It wasn't important to me what you say. How can a Christian say what God says is important? can't. Be consistent. If you're going to be a Christian, be consistent. Consistently a Christian. Otherwise, just stop it. Go read tarot cards. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. That's what we're supposed to be doing. <sighs> we have a different spirit. Yes, we do. Because uh, of my faith in Jesus Christ and his infallible world, word, word, I have a spirit of faith and trust and patience and hope and encouragement, not frustration, anger, fighting, and bitterness and disappointment. Well, I'm not sure those are mutually exclusive depending on what you're looking at. Uh, when you're looking at the world, it's like, eh, I don't see a whole lot of hope in the world. No, the hope is in Christ. All the things that are good are in Christ. They're not in the world. They're not in the world. All that stuff's passing away. You can spend all your life building up your own little kingdom in earth, and it's going to turn to dust. Turn to dust. Sooner than you know it, you're going to die. And then it's not going to do you any good at all. doesn't do you any good here. It just causes you misery. <laughs> More often than not, see, you can strive for something. Oh, I really would like this. I really, But then you get it and you find out it doesn't satisfy you. Because the only thing that can satisfy a human being, truly, is God. Is to be in a right relationship with God. The fundamental problem in America is spiritual, not political. Well, it's political too, but it's spiritually rooted. The politics are a manifestation of the wickedness that is American society today. It's like Joe Biden. Let's remember, he was elected. He was elected. Even if there were shenanigans involved, he still was elected. An awful lot of people voted for somebody that was just terrible. Not that you had a great choice. I can agree with that. But The elections are so often scams. We get a choice. The devil determines who's going to run, and then we get to choose between his candidates. Doesn't sound like a, a real, well, the, the whole idea of democracy. Rule by the people. No, Christians don't want rule by the people. We want rule by God. We want to be personally ruled by God. The ideas of churches being a democracy, that, that the uh, you know, Lincoln of the people, by the people, and for the people, that's sinful. That's wicked. Uh, Jesus Christ, who is the king, does not agree with that. Lincoln was not a Christian either. Never claimed to be. got 600,000 soldiers in the United States dead because he didn't know the way of peace, because he didn't know Jesus Christ. He did things his own way. And so did a lot of other people. The 
It cannot be resolved by political warriors and politicians and judges of any stripe. True. Elections will not change America. The problems with America are spiritual and sinful. It has gone down this path for way too long and way too far. Not America alone. gone all the way down to Sodom. There comes a time when you got to clean things up. The way it's going right now, we've got leaders in the United States, if you call them leaders, that are pushing the world to the edge of nuclear incineration. Christ will stop it. He'll come because he has to stop it. Or no one would survive. It's what he himself said. If those days, the last days, were not cut short, no flesh, no human beings would be saved. They would all perish. The New Testament church, well, again, the New Testament church is God's people is a pillar and ground of the truth in this present world. We, we are the, 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 the truth dwells in the church because Christ dwells in the church. He's a pillar and ground. He upholds all things. Creation itself. If it wasn't for Christ upholding it, it would just disappear. Just beep, gone. He created out of nothing and it will turn back into nothing if he just lets it. He holds it up. He holds it together. America has always been a nation of churches. He's repeating himself. Well, yeah, not many, though. And the corruption of the churches is America's fundamental problem. The churches have always been corrupt, most of them. Church of England was corrupt. The Puritans became corrupt quite quickly. In fact, within a generation or two, they became uh, Unitarian Universalists. That's about as corrupt as you can get. And the corruption of the churches is Americans' fundamental problem. No. The, the Bible doesn't say this. See, this, this is David. At this point, it's David uh, uh, Cloud's interpretation. No, it's not just the churches. It's hard to find a good church. Really hard. But I don't know if that's all new. Things have gotten worse. But it's just not that. See, you can have godly Christians in an ungodly, wicked, atheist country. Because sinners run away from God. And the more godly Christians are, the more they'll be hated and despised. I don't think David's thinking biblically there. Christians are persecuted for the same reason as Abel was uh, slain by his brother Cain. Because Abel was good. His, his works were right in God's sight, and, and Cain's weren't. So Cain solved the problem by killing his brother, his good brother, who made him look bad. Yep, things haven't changed. Not in that sense. Just there's a whole lot more sin in the world because there's a whole lot more people in the world. Eight billion. Eight billion if God's redeemed people would wake up from the slumber of carnality and worldliness and be zealous for the work of God in, in church and home, there's no telling what God might do. Well, I think God's going to have to do it without that, David, because the, the fact that their slumber of carna carnality and worldliness might mean they're not born again. As I said, you can have the first century, you had the apostles and the saints, the Holy Spirit poured out, uh, judgment in the church, Ananias and Sapphira, the God struck them dead for lying about their offering. Um, and yet, the world continued to be evil. It has always continued to be evil. The majority of people uh, of the world is always been of the devil. That's, that is the world. It's his domain. 
It's when you're born again, you're delivered out of that darkness into the kingdom of God. So David's thinking, eh, he's not quite thinking biblically here. <sighs> Nevertheless, and even a relatively uh, few on-fire churches can make a major difference. Bible doesn't say that, David. Sorry. And that knowing the time that is now high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. You know, every day it is nearer. <laughs> the night is far spent. Well, it's getting really dark out there. You know, the last... If you ever driven all night long, the hardest time is those last hours before the sun finally begins to dawn. When you're just going and going, like 3 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m., it's just, just dark. That's where it is now, just dark. But Jesus said when you see all this stuff, this evil things happening that he talks about in in. Uh, in Matthew and in Luke and in the Gospels, of what will take place before he returns. Look up. He says all these things will happen, but look up. New Testament's full of passages that talk about the last days being times of increasing evil. And David Cloud knows this. So he's 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 deviated from his what he himself believes here. So I'm just correcting him a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, politics isn't going to save America. That's really what David is saying here. Politics is not going to save America, but neither our church is going to save America. God must save America. Sinners need to repent. And America is not going to be saved on its own. I mean, you can... A country can... In the Old Testament, God's people Israel, God's covenant people, they're never voluntarily returned. They usually had to be thrown into, uh, turned over to their enemies, or, or cast out of the country and you know conquered, taken prisoners for seventy years to Babylon. They just had gone so far that God had to remove them, and they were God's people, not under the same covenant, not with the Holy Spirit abiding in them individually. We have a whole lot of advantages over them. But there's so few believers, real believers. And our job is not to make a difference in the world. Our job is to testify of Jesus Christ, uh, to, to live lives that are consistent with what he calls us to live. And that doesn't always mean going out, everybody knocking on people's doors. Just live differently than the world. Don't live for partying and drunkenness and money and stuff for yourself. Just make God the center of your life. Realize that that's what you're supposed to be. And trust God to do the work. God has to change us. We can't change ourselves. That's part of the American delusion. Self-help. No, we need God's help. God's help. And it's not whether, whatever happens to America, God gets to decide that. It is God that judges those who are in the world. And if God chooses to incinerate America in a thermonuclear holocaust, all I can say is, Amen. May the will of God be done. Now, I'm not counseling him to do that. I don't particularly want it. But I don't know if, which would be worse, getting vaporized in an instant or staying here the way things are going. See, it's getting so bad that Christ has to return because these people will destroy the planet. These people are nuts. They're psychopaths, sociopaths. People in power. The people in Washington. The people in uh, wherever the place in Belgium is. The, U the EU. And so many other places, especially in the West. They're out of their minds. 
They don't know left from right anymore because they have forgotten God. And the Bible declares that every nation, every person that forgets God will be turned aside to hell, to destruction. See, hell is just the, the scrap pile at the end of the road for the rejects. The big landfill, the eternal landfill for the rejects, for the garbage. For human beings that decided they didn't need God, they didn't want God, they just wanted to be irredeemable, self-centered devils. So God just confines them for eternity. What else can he do with them? Not his will. His will was that they repent and turn to Christ. He made himself known to everybody. He said, I, I don't want you. I don't even want you in my mind. When God turns them over to punishment, they still don't repent. Just look at what's going on in the society today. There's things going on here that weren't going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Just absolute absurdity. Not just sexual sins either. Their minds are gone. They don't know the difference between reality and fantasy. Those are people they used to lock up in, in, in asylums for the insane. Now they're trumpeted, platformed throughout the world as heroes. They're not heroes. They're degenerates. They're people that have rejected God, rejected reality. How much worse can you get than that? And yet they have the power. People like Elon Musk that wants to, or Elon Musk, or however you say, Elon, that wants to turn us on to cyborgs and others to connect our brains to the internet with an implant. They're nuts. Establish a colony on Mars. Wasn't there a Schwarzenegger movie about that? It didn't work out good. See, these people don't believe God. They don't believe God's testimony. They don't believe in God's existence, not the God of the Bible. We don't need to have a survival colony on God. God's in charge. We don't need to be worried about global warming. God's in charge. But we need our hearts changed. So we're not bent on evil, on self-centeredness, and pleasing ourselves. But more concerned about pleasing God. See, sin is at the root of everything that's wrong in this world. Everything. And Jesus Christ is the only answer to sin. One way or the other, either the grace of God's salvation through faith in Christ or the judgment of God when Christ returns. God's going to put everything in order one way or the other.